And we are back again. So uh, you grab a coffee, I guess, and now we are ready for the next session. We are with uh, Federico Valeri from Red Hat, and uh, he's going to talk about enhancing Kafka topic management in Kubernetes with the unidirectional topic uh, operator. So hand over to you, Fede. OK, so thanks, Paolo. Uh, thank you for having me here today. I'm Federico Valeri, and I work as a, a software engineer at Red Hat, uh, specifically in the Kafka team, where we deal with StreamZ, of course, and Kafka. Um, today, I would like to talk to you about the topic operator, which is one of the components that are uh, provisioned uh, alongside with Kafka, with StreamZ, sorry. Um, and this, um, this component is one of the operators that are included and the bundled together with StreamZ. Uh, but let's first have a step back and talk about the topics. Uh, what topics are in Kafka and how they are uh, organized into the file system, uh, which is something useful to know. Um, so you can think um, of a topic as a table in a database, but more specifically, it's a name feed where messages can be published and consumed. Um, these messages are immutable and they are stored in one or more partitions. These partitions can also be replicated for, for tolerance uh, if needed. Um, each of these partitions is an append-only log made of a series of segments. So if you look at this picture on the right, you see we have a, a cluster, uh, a Kafka cluster with a bunch of topics uh, created inside it. Uh, one of them, for example, topic C, uh, is uh, composed of a number of partitions. In this case, we have four partitions, you can see. And on the file system, they are represented as folders. Uh, so Kafka stores them as folders uh, named by the topic and the uh, partition number. Uh, so they are really easy to identify. And if we take one of these partitions, for example, partition two, number two, we see that it's divided into a series of segments file. These are actually files on the file system. Um, so you, you can see them, uh, they are named by the offset the, of the message they, are, uh, they contained, the first offset. Uh, and if you notice, we have one of them, which is a little bit darker with the color, because I want to highlight that this is the active uh, segment where messages are being appended to. All the others are become read only when they, they become full and Kafka automatically provision a new segment for, for, for you to store messages. Uh, these segments, um, as you can see, uh, represent the log. So we say that a partition is an append log on the log, and you can see that messages are stored in this segment, in these files, um, along with a bunch of indexes to make uh, retrieval and consumer cons uh, consuming parts uh, more efficient. Um, moving on, the, the real object, as we have seen, inside Kafka to store your messages are partitions. Um, so while the topic is a virtual concept, partitions, as you have seen, are real and they are stored in the file system. They are actually folders and files on the file system. Um, these partitions, when, when you create a topic, are distributed evenly across the brokers. And there are a number of configurations that, that you can use uh, for your use cases. Uh, but there are two of them which are uh, the most important. Um, which are replication factor and retention policy. So first of all, replication factor. For each partition of your topic, you can uh, optionally create more replicas to make it more uh, robust and, and to handle fault tolerance. As you can see from the picture here, we have one partition, <coughs> partition number two, which is composed, uh, which has three replicas uh, that are hosted on three different brokers. You can see Broker zero, broker one, and broker two. And one of them is elected as leader. Uh, so the leader of a partition typically always gets the, the input, the messages from producers' applications. So they all come to the leader. Um, and then there are the followers replicate from the leader all these messages uh, and confirm to the leader the, the replication. Um, these watermark uh, marks which messages are confirmed to the leader that have been replicated. Um, so for example, here 
you see that uh, follower number two here has replicated up to the offset number two uh, and, and confirmed to the leader. And follower, the other follower here in, has received the messages, but yet not confirmed to the leader. So we see the algorithm or still need to advance, but it will be done in the next few nanoseconds. So this is just a picture taken in one specific moment. Um, Along with the replication, you need to know about the in-sync replica set, which means, which contains uh, the replica that are in sync with the leader, meaning that they are cuff up with the leader up to a certain delta that is also configurable. Um, if some of the replica, which are hosted on brokers, uh, slow down because of some issue uh, with, the, with, the, with the server, then this replica is kicked out of the sync replica set. And why this is important? Because uh, if you want to ensure for tolerance for your and, and, uh, and uh, for, for your applications, you typically want to configure replication factor three with man ISR two. That's the typical configuration, which means um, at any time at least two replica must be in the in sync replica set. So that if the leader for some reason uh, fails, then uh, another follower can take it over and start accepting the. Uh, messages from, from the applications. Um, in this case, application will automatically fail over to the to the new leader. So this is all uh, handled automatically and you need you don't need to worry about that. Uh, but if you just have one one replica, of course, if the replica goes down, your your um, producer has stopped and they cannot consume anymore. Uh, on the producer side, you need to remember to enable uh, ax all configuration, which means okay, I want a confirmation of my message only when uh, it's replicated uh, fully to the in-sync replica set, to the to the replica set. Uh, uh, moving on, we have the retention policy, which is another fundamental um, uh, configuration to, to take it right uh, when you create a new topic. Uh, this, this, along with the ingestion rate of messages, determine how much this space is used. Um, and by default, Kafka set only retention of your messages by time, uh, and it's, it's a week by default. Uh, so your message will start to be deleted after a week. Uh, but usually we recommend to, so to also set retention by size, uh, because it can happen that uh, one of your producer applications has some clock drift, some um, clock issue on the server which is running it, and it may send a message with a timestamp into the future. And this timestamp is used to do the cleanup uh, when the retention kicks in. Uh, and if the if just one um, message in a single segment file um, has a timestamp into the future, then uh, it cannot be uh, deleted. Uh, the, the whole segment cannot be deleted. And by default, the segment is one gigabyte in size. So this gigabyte will stay there for some time and maybe causing issues with your disk. Uh, but if you also have retention dot bytes um, set, then when you will reach the uh, size limit that you configured, at this point, uh, this the broker will start deleting all the segment uh, with all the match messages. So that's, that's something that usually is it's also set. Um, Finally, one important property of, the, of a single partition is that um, it guarantees the message ordering. So, uh, and it's only guaranteed at the partition level, so not across partitions. If you have multiple partitions, message ordering is not guaranteed across them. Um, and for example, if you if you increase the partition number, that, that that is something that you can do in Kafka, then you are breaking ordering. So if your use case absolutely requires message ordering, uh, and then you need to use one single partition, or alternatively, you maybe can uh, reorder uh, on the consumer side in some way. Uh, so that's that's something you you need to know. Also, referring to the hard watermark uh, messages are visible to consumer only when uh, um, up to the hard watermark. So we consider them committed; they are safe story uh, in the cluster, and and consumer can see them and consume them. Uh, so, speaking about the challenges of managing Kafka topics, uh, so you, you can imagine to have a shared cluster maybe, 
uh, or a busy cluster with hundreds of topics, dozens of partitions. Uh, it is running in production. Um, so, and you somehow have to manage this, uh, this uh, cluster with all these topics. And the challenge here is to, to maybe manage the, the topic configuration and creation declaratively uh, using maybe GitOps pipelines, which automate uh, the provisioning of the, of the topics. Um, and also you, you can mm, handle them centrally, maybe on a Git, Git uh, repository. Uh, so you can apply changing consistently, um, set some rules, uh, automation, stuff like that. Um, another challenge is uh, that you want your cluster to support work operations, spikes in um, uh, topic uh, requests, uh, topic changes, configuration changes. This can happen, of, as I said, in, in busy clusters, where lots of different teams are working on, on their solutions, uh, in creating topics, uh, increasing partitions, doing some changes. And also, maybe you, are, you also want to do lo uh, some load testing on your cluster, uh, where you typically create a lot of topics at the start of the test, and then you delete all, all, of, uh, all of them at once uh, uh, when the test is, is over. Uh, so you, you want to your solution, your Kafka service, to support all of these seamlessly um, and account for, for this peak. Uh, then another need could be to delegate topic management in a controlled way. Uh, with that, I mean, your admin your administrators may want to limit all the possible configuration that you can do on a topic um, so that the Kafka service is more robust, you, you, you can enforce best practices. Uh, so this is another area where that can be challenging when administering um, a Kafka cluster. Finally, of course, you want to monitor the topic state and be notified about any issue that is happening. Uh, Kafka already provides metrics, uh, a lot of metrics, um, but you need a way to organize them and, and filter them to what is really relevant for your use case, maybe creating uh, dashboards, um, and of course, connecting these metrics also to an alert system that can send you messages and alerts uh, when bad things happen so that you can react quickly. In StreamZ, we provide uh, some examples of these uh, dashboards using uh, the, stack, the Prometheus stack with Grafana that can be taken as a base or to, to create your own custom dashboards. And now uh, we can talk about the topic operator, which is the an application part of the StreamZ uh, project, which extends the Kubernetes API, introducing the Kafka topic custom resource, which is a way to uh, declare uh, how your topic should look like uh, with a configuration file, with a simple YAML file, and then this operation that the, to uh, the topic operator will um, provision that for you, will create that on the target Kafka cluster. Uh, one important point here is to remember that uh, a topic operator instance can reconcile Kafka topic in a single namespace for a single Kafka cluster. Um, so this can be seen as a limitation, but there are reasons uh, because it works like that. So if you need if you need to have multiple cluster or want to have multiple namespaces, then you, you should have multiple instances of the topic operator, which is, by the way, really easy to achieve. Uh, speaking about deployment modes, uh, you can deploy the, the topic operator um, as part of the Kafka custom resource. So you define your Stream the Kafka custom resource uh, with all the Kafka configuration, Zookeeper configuration if you're using Zookeeper, and then you can add the topic operator as one property in there. It's really easy, and I call it standard model. You, you can see up here, uh, we have a single namespace, topic operator and Kafka running, running inside it, and also you may want to also have the, your Kafka topic uh, custom resource uh, in there. Another Deployment mode is the standalone, where you have the topic operator running in its own namespace, maybe we also hosting the Kafka topics, but they could be hosted also in a, in a different namespace. If you want, that's, uh, you can configure that. And this, the Kafka service, you can see, is running in another namespace, which could also be, a, it, a, it can also be an external service to the Kubernetes cluster. So it can be 
a cloud service, Amazon uh, MSK, for example. So the topic operator offer you this flexibility to connect to external Kafka service if you really need it. So you, you can use, only use the topic operator if it's needed for your use case. Of course, the, the topic operator supports various security methods, TLS and SAS authentications against the target Kafka cluster. So uh, that's uh, fully uh, configurable uh, and you can make use of it. So how a Kafka tablet looks like, you can see here a simple example of that. It's a YAML file. Um, uh, you see that's, that we have a namespace, Kafka Streamv.io, uh, with a version for the AVI, the kind of Kafka topic. And we have three major sections that you have to define. Uh, metadata, specification, and the status, um, which you don't have to define, but it's updated by the, by the platform. Uh, so in the metadata part, you, you, you can see we have a specific labels which indicates what's the target Kafka cluster. Uh, and you can see that I only specify one, can only specify one cluster, one set of labels for, for my cluster. Uh, then we have the name of the topic, of course. Uh, and the specification part is where you uh, specify, you say, what's what's the configuration for your topic, what, how many partitions you want, and how many replicas for each partition. In this case, we have five partitions and three replicas. The status part is created and updated by the topic operator. So when you see a new Kafka topic, it tries to reconcile all the desired state of, for this topic into the target Kafka cluster. And then you, it reports back a status update in the in the same uh, Kafka topic resource that you created. And you can see in this case, it's ready. We, we have a timestamp. Uh, you, you see that the observed generation matches with the generation in the metadata. It means that uh, the operator uh, has seen your changes and is working on that or already uh, applied them uh, to, the, uh, to the target Kafka cluster. And in the style section, we also add some uh, useful information like the topic ID, you can see here, which represents the incarnation of this uh, topic. And for example, if someone deletes the topic in, inside Kafka out of band and recreate them um, uh, with the same name, then this will have a different topic ID. Uh, so that's how you can detect this uh, operation. Uh, now I would like to speak about some history and, and, and the futures for for the product, for this component um, and what we we want to do. So we started in 2018, uh, one of the first or, or the first release of StreamZ that already included the topic operator. We call it old generation now. Um, it uh, it had uh, the so-called bidirectional reconciliation, uh, which kind of uh, is, a, is a departure from uh, the standard operator model, where you typically um, reconcile Kafka uh, uh, Kubernetes resources to a target system. It's one way, so from Kubernetes to the target system. In this case, um, we uh, opted for the bidirectional reconciliation, so reconciling Kafka topic changes from what Kubernetes from Kafka topic resources and and uh, changes coming from directly from Kafka from people. Uh, using, for, for example, command line tools to create the own topic or the admin client. Uh, so we knew that uh, mo uh, a lot of applications create their, their own topics. So it's a common practice and the platform and Kafka allows you to do that. So at the time we saw that it was a good idea to uh, provide bidirectional reconciliation so that if you create uh, some topic inside Kafka directly, it will be materialized at Kafka.resource in Kubernetes. But that that's kind of came with their own challenges and complexity, um, which, for example, made the application stateful. Because in order to detect changes coming from both sides, Kubernetes and Kafka, you need to compare these changes against a, a, a source of truth, uh, which, which is stored, in this case, locally in the local storage. Uh, uh, with that, you can detect what change. Um, and also, for example, if it's needed, if you get some conflict, so the same configuration change on both sides at the same time, the operator then needs to apply some winner policy or, for example, raise an error. 
but it, it needs to have this uh, local storage, the topic metadata stored locally in order to, to do this three-way merge. So as you see, this added a lot of complexity. And during the time, we also uh, improved a little bit. Uh, we fixed some, some bugs that came out um, and also rewrite some parts using the Kafka Streams API. Um, but still, we were, were using bidirectional uh, reconciliation, uh, and, say, and it was also zero reconciliation, meaning one topic at a time, uh, one topic event at a time. Uh, it was fast, but still uh, had some limitation uh, on the scaling side. Um, then in last year, uh, we uh, analyze all these uh, issues, scaling issues, and other uh, issues that we had in the past with the bidirectional uh, reconciliation, and tended to um, implement to re-implement the topic operator with a new architecture, which is more maintainable, has better scaling, and the main thing here is uh, that we switch semantically the reconciliation from being bidirectional to being unidirectional. So now we are following exactly the operator pattern, and uh, all your changes uh, will be done inside Kubernetes, and this will be um, reconciled against the target Kafka cluster, and there is no way the other way around. So if you do some changes out of band directly in Kafka, the operator will try to revert them according to your Kafka specification, if there is one. Um, so if you create a new topic in, directly in Kafka, it won't be materialized direct, uh, automatically in Kubernetes, but you need to create the Kafka resource. And that, at that point, the operator, the topic operator will start managing and reconciling it. Um, we also may, made it batch. So the reconciliation is now um, using uh, batching together multiple uh, topic events uh, and reconciling them uh, with uh, a single request against the Kafka uh, target cluster, um, because this is what the admin Kafka client API allows you to do, and we take advantage of that. Finally, and most uh, and most importantly, we also now support Craft, which is, as you know, um, as you know, the keeper is um, deprecated and will be removed in Kafka 4.0. And uh, the old generation has a strong dependency on, on Zookeeper, and so the, the, the new one supports both modes, so you can run it with Zookeeper or Craft, uh, so these, these are both uh, supported. The new generation became GA in the la uh, latest release a few weeks ago, uh, 041, where we also have a, a new feature, big feature, which is called Replication Factor Change, uh, that makes it really easy to, to change the replication factor, which was one of the things that the old operator couldn't do. Uh, and also, of course, some minor improvements. Um, we will talk a bit more about the application factor change later on in the presentation. And for the future, uh, so we still have some backlog of, of things we would like to work on and, and explore more. Uh, this is not, not ready yet, but uh, some users ask for multi spin reconciliation and we will talk a bit about this at the end of the presentation, and also management delegation. So I want to restrict in some way uh, what the user can do with topics. Uh, so this is an area that we can explore further and, and, and create new features on. Here, just a quick recap uh, of between the old generation and the new generation of the topic operator. Old generation is bidirectional serial reconciliation. The new one is just unidirectional and batch reconciliation. Uh, stateful application for the old, stateless application for the new generation, which make it uh, lighter and faster. Uh, and so out of this comes improved scalability, of course. Um, we have a simplified architecture for so the internal components of the topic operator application are um, well, really well defined and, and they. Uh, it's, it's less moving parts, let me say, easier to maintain. Uh, and we, of course, we support both, both Zookeeper and Craft in the new generation. Um, what were the old gener generation issues? Uh, mainly, as I said, it was hard to maintain because of internal complexity. Some corner cases were 
are not still well understood. There is, uh, we fixed a lot of bugs and, and we did improvements and it was uh, running fine uh, for most customers, but some of them, for example, hit this invalid state store exception issue, which was really hard to work around. And we kind of mitigated um, the occurrence of that issue, but there is no proper fix. Uh, you now don't, don't have to worry about it because it's in the new, the new implementation is not affected by that. But if you're curious and wants to know more and also find some workaround, you can, you can go uh, click on this link and uh, you, you go directly to the issue in the description and discussion. Uh, limited scalability was another issue. Some customer reported that when they start to creating lots of topics and partitions, performance uh, starts to uh, go down a little bit. Uh, this is the result of some defined choices. One of them is that you reconcile one topic at a time. Another one is that it needs to update a persistent storage, which makes operations uh, a lot um, um, slower. Uh, and then finally, it requires a keeper, which is going away soon in Kafka. Uh, the new generation uh, brings, as I said, a set of new chip features already, and we will see hopefully more in the future. Um, first of all, it much better. You can see here uh, on the right, we have a, a small diagram that I created out of some custom log tests. Uh, so take the numbers as they are. Uh, but it, I, I want to just to compare performance on, on a, um, a control environment like my laptop in this case. Um, the workload that I'm sending for this load test is a mixed workload with topic creations, um, configuration changes, and topic deletions, all executed in parallel by some uh, clients. Uh, and then you see on the X axis um, a, a number of batches of events. Each data point represents a batch of events. So how many topic events I'm generating for this test? And on the y-axis, you see the time. So the end-to-end -end reconciliation in seconds. Uh, the blue line is um, the, the new implementation of the topic operator. And you can see that this scales much better and uh, has better performance overall. Uh, speaking about new features, we now support some managing a topic uh, in addition to pausing the reconciliation. So this is useful, for example, if you want to delete a Kafka custom Kafka topic resource in Kubernetes, but don't want to delete the topic inside Kafka. You, you simply want to start unmanaging, but the topic is still needed by some application. So in this case, you with a simple annotation, you, you, you create the annotation on the Kafka topic and the uh, topic operator will start to ignore uh, this uh, Kafka topic resource from now on. So you can delete it and the, uh, the garbage, uh, Kubernetes garbage collector will uh, remove it from, from the cluster. But the topic is still uh, in, in the Kafka target cluster. Uh, as I said, we support the replication factor change easily by editing the Kafka topic uh, resource. We will see more details about that in a minute. We enable finalizer by default now, which helps with uh, topic, topic deletion events. Um, there is a problem in the old implementation where, for example, your, your topic operator is not running for, for any reason. Maybe there is some maintenance, maybe there is some issue, but it's not running. And if someone deletes a Kafka topic inside Kubernetes, uh, this, this event can be missed by the operator because it's not running. And when it starts up, it, it has no idea uh, that there was a deletion event. But right now, by default, um, the topic operator will create a finalizer and attach it to the uh, Kafka topic resource, so that if someone deletes the topic, the Kafka topic resource is not actually deleted by uh, Kubernetes. It stays there, and, the, and when the topic operator starts again, it will see the finalizer and complete the operation, um, allowing then Kubernetes to clean up the resource. Uh, so that, that's an, um, a nice improvement, in my opinion. Um, and then we also, um, in addition to the standard metrics that you already had, um, in the old implementation, because it's fully com uh, backward compatible with the old implementation, we added some additional metrics. Um, you know that the topic operator uh, has to connect to external system in order to reconcile your Kafka topics, um, and we track the performance um, of this request to external system. So you have, 
for each operation we have a matrix uh, and this is disabled by default but if you enable it can use can be useful for pinpointing performance issue to some specific uh, standard service and by that i mean kubernetes api server kafka cluster of course and now right now also cruise control and can be also useful for load testing if you want to break it down uh, to the single uh, request performance. Uh, replication factor change. So that, that's the one of the biggest new feature we, we added recently. Um, there are some challenges here when, if you want to do a uh, replication factor change for one of your topic. Um, uh, Kafka pro uh, provides a, a command line tool called Kafka Resign Partitions, which is not complicated to use. But the complicated part is to tell him which leader and replica moments you have to do in order to increase your or decrease your replication factor. And you know you need to do that without causing imbalance. So that's really the complex part. If you have a cluster in production with uh, uh, hundreds of topics, thousands of partitions, many users. Uh, so basically, what you need to do on your own, uh, and Kafka does not provide any support for that is to create a kind of a workload model for your cluster. What's the incoming traffic, outgoing traffic, how every broker is using the CPU and the other resources like memory and disk. Uh, because you want to move these replicas, partition replicas from one broker to another, but without causing imbalance, cluster imbalance. So without putting too much load on a broker, maybe that is already overloaded. So that's the tricky part. And it's really, you need to, develop your own custom model to, in order to do that reliably. Uh, that's where cruise control helps. Uh, it provides a resting point called topic configuration, which allows you to exactly do that, to change the regression factor, leveraging the same heuristic that is used for the balances, which ensure that your movement are, are fine with the cluster balance. And the good news is also that it supports batch requests. Uh, so we can stack uh, together multiple uh, replication factor changes if it's needed. Uh, I prepared a little demo here for you on this. Um, you can see here on the right, I have my cluster already provisioned. Um, it's, it has four, uh, three brokers. Uh, the topic operator deployed inside this entity operator uh, pod. Um, alongside with the user operator, we deploy them together. And also we have cruise control. So these are all part of the same Kafka resource, which deploy everything for you automatically. I also created the Kafka topic. This is similar to the definition we just saw in the presentation. Um, you can see we have in here five partitions in the spec part and only one replica. Um, the topic is ready and we had some metadata like the topic ID available. Uh, what I want to do now is to um, ask to Kafka directly, which is the configuration of this topic, and see if it matches what we asked for at the, to the topic operator creating this Kafka topic resource. You can see here I'm just using the Kafka topics command line tool provided by Kafka, connecting to my uh, Kafka cluster provision here, and I, I'm telling I want to description of this topic. Uh, my topic called my topic. If I run this command, a new pod will spin up uh, just to do this operation. Okay, you can see now that we have the configuration printed out and we have five partitions and one replica, which matches exactly what we have here. So you can you can see that the topic operator did this job well, really well. We have the same configurations that we have specified in the uh, spec part. Um, you can see some additional configuration here, which are basically inherited by the cluster default. So they are, they are not part of, of the original specification, but they are added automatically by, the, by Kafka. Um, you can see that we have our uh, five partitions and only one replica. So now, in order to change the replication factor, I just can simply edit the Kafka topic resource called my topic. So I'm using the topic name here. 
And then with the editor you prefer, then you go to the spec part, replicas, and I can change from one to three, for example. Um, and then I will save the change. And as you can see down here in the status part, we now have a replicas change uh, section, which uh, reveals that the topic operator detected your change and it contacted cruise control, creating a task for applying this uh, configuration change, creating the new, in this case, creating the new um, partition. And it has a session ID, which the operator uses to pull periodically uh, the outcome of this task. You see that it already it was already completed. The task is ex executed asynchronously. As we have seen, risk control requires some time to apply the change, but it's not too much, depending on the volume of replicas change that you had. Uh, and now you don't have to trust me that we can check again the same uh, command for the Kafka topic configuration. And you can see that we now have five partitions, a replication factor count three. And for each partition, you see now we have uh, three replicas well balanced in the cluster. So going back to the presentation, uh, that's it. Multi-name space reconciliation. Uh, so this is something that we currently do not support, uh, but it's something that came out uh, from, from you, from users, uh, from the community. Um, they would like to see support for reconciliation of, um, on multiple namespaces. Um, because the use case is, uh, I have my applications here running, um, and I would like to restrict the access to these namespa application namespaces. So I would like them to also host the Kafka topics. Uh, so each application will host its own Kafka topic so that the administrator don't have to give permission to the infrastructure part, which is topic operator, for example, in Kafka. And it's also a use case about shared Kafka topics. So you, you know that you can have, uh, you, can, you, you can use Kafka to various use cases and with various applications, so you can have one shared Kafka cluster uh, supporting all of them. Uh, but the problem here is that Kafka has limited support for multi-tenancy. So there is some support, but for example, if you have uh, some topic, uh, two topics with the same name running on two different namespaces, for example, KT0 here. Uh, so how do you uh, reconcile them? How do you map them to, into the target cluster cluster? So that's something that is, uh, right now it's not possible, it's not supported, but we would like maybe to see implemented, but uh, we need to, we just, start to think about it. We need a formal proposal, design proposal for that. Uh, one, one way to support that will be to, of course, um, use a prefix with, with the topic name, uh, putting inside the namespace, and Kafka support that using the create topic policy interface that can be used. But then you also need to think about a, a role-based access control reconciliation because the topic operator needs need to access the Kafka topic and reconcile them in these uh, various namespaces, how you do specify which namespaces to reconcile. And uh, it will be good also to have coordination with what we do for the user operator, which has the same, basically the same need. And so it, uh, we, we don't need a proposal that covers both of them, it can be different, but maybe we, we will need to share the solution and, and apply a, um, a consistent pattern uh, for both of them. Uh, finally, I want to touch on some risk conditions that you need to be aware of. Um, you, you can have multiple Kafka topics created at the same time. The topic operator will reconcile them fine. And, and for, for the first one, it will be actually reconciled and will managing the topic. The other will get resource conflict, pointing to the uh, to the Kafka topic that was reconciled su successfully. So this can happen if you have multiple teams working on the same cluster. Another risk condition that you need to be aware of is application automatically creating their own topics. This is why this is the reason why we initially used the bidirectional reconciliation. Here you can the topic operator can do much. You can 
for example, disable the automatic topic creation, but then application can use the admin client to create their own topic. So the best uh, suggestion here is to call your application to wait for the topic creation. And finally, the operator uh, uh, reverse cruise control dynamic throttle configs. This, this was a recent bug report, um, and the cruise control adds these dynamic topic configurations while doing rebalancing in order to reduce the impact of moving that around onto the uh, cluster client. Uh, the operator should ignore that. Instead, it, it tries to reverse it. So we are already working on a fix. And if you go to this uh, link, you, you can find the discussion. And there is also a workaround presented there, which can be applied in the meantime. And that's basically it. I'm leaving you with a list of um, uh, links, useful links. The first one is the official documentation, streams the documentation about the topic operator. Then you have a nice blog post where we introduce the, the new semantic unidirectional uh, switch. Uh, and uh, we have some more details in there if you're curious. And then if you really want to know the, the uh, details of the implementation, you have these three design proposals, uh, one covering the initial release, the design, and then topic replication factor change. And also we, we had some performance tests to ensure that the performance of the topic of beta now, in case of any big change, can be verified. Uh, that's basically it. I have, all I have to for you today. Thank you, thank you for watching. Thank you, Fede. So we are uh, actually on time. There is no time for questions. Maybe let's grab just one, <clears throat> maybe a quick one. Sure. Uh, and then you can stick around answering the others. Uh, from Patrick, uh, am I understanding this correctly that running cruise control is a prerequisite for changing replicas via topic operator? Yes, yes. If you don't have um, cruise control enabled, then you will get an error, like, like the old behavior with the old implementation. So it will say, okay, change the replication factor is not supported. But as soon as you enable the integration, which is uh, basically uh, just a change in the Kafka custom resource, then your uh, uh, this possibility, this functionality will be automatically enabled and, and then you will start getting this new feature. Okay, let me get just uh, one um, and then you can answer the others there. Can you detect and report unmanaged topics that are in the cluster? Yes, yes, of course. You can you can query using kubectl, um, and uh, oh, you mean maybe you mean if there is any tool that can detect and manage topics. Uh, so we don't have this right now. This can be one of the improvement we can add. So some tool that uh, allows you to automatically create looking at Kafka cluster the Kafka topic results in Kubernetes. So. That will be something that uh, we also mentioned in the design proposal, original design proposal, uh, like something that will be useful. So looking, looking at Kafka, uh, please uh, create a Kafka topic resource for each of the Kafka topics you see there. OK, and then the last one, <clears throat> and I will leave, uh, I guess, the most complex one on the chat, um, because mm -hmm. I think that this one is fast. Uh, is the kubectl Kafka command line tool something internal to Red Hat? Seems really useful, no. I guess, from the demo, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's just um, a nice shortcut uh, bash uh, alias that I created for me. It's not anything complicated. It's just kubectl run um, command, you know, specifying an image. It's actually using the, Kaf the official Kafka image, which is, was released recently. So it's just some good uh, bash alias that I can share if it's anyone is interested. Just some way to quickly test uh, uh, with with uh, standard uh, Kafka clients. Okay, thank you, Fede. There is just one question. I will leave it to you on the chat <coughs> right after. Yeah, uh, during the okay. break. If Perfect. Thank around. You. So thank you very much for your session. And uh, for the yeah for the attendees, uh, we'll see at this point in five minutes last <clears throat> coffee break before the last session. See you later. Thank you. Bye.